Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white plus one counter deck, although it's not your typical counters deck in the sense that we're not even playing with the Ozolith. Instead I'm trying to keep the creature count as high as possible, so we have more humans that can tap for mana alongside Catilda, more creatures in general that can pick up plus one plus one counters from the six mana ability, which we're also going to activate quite often in this build, and so we also have more creatures we can play off the top using Augur of Autumn, can initially only play lands off the top, can still be a nice source of card advantage, but then and as soon as we enable Coven, we can also play creatures of the top, and especially paired with the extra mana from Catilda and from Stalwart, we can quickly pull ahead. And our deck is also pretty good at enabling Coven, since we have creatures that can grow over time, such as the Botanical Brawler, as well as a zero-powered creature at one mana with the Enduring Bond Warden, which has backup one, so it can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature when it enters, and when the Bond Warden or that creature dies during that turn, it can put its counters onto target creature we control, which can also come up. And then we've got the Hopeful Initiate, it's a human to tap for mana alongside Catilda, it has training to pick up more counters, and can remove two counters from among any creatures we control to destroy target artifact or enchantment, and all of those abilities are quite useful. Initiate is especially synergistic with a turn 2 botanical brawler, as it can sort of grow each other. Brawler will grow the initiate with training, and then training grows the brawler as well. And then Botanical Brawler is definitely one of the all-stars in this deck, especially when paired with our Virtue of Loyalty. Can start out by making a 2-2 Knight, but once we get the enchantment down, which is not too difficult thanks to our extra mana from Stalwart, just has to tap another untapped creature we control or potentially artifact, and then can make one mana of any color. And then Catilda with all the extra humans can also give us a nice mana boost. And then once we get the enchantment down, we can untap our creatures each turn, as well as put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. And because our curve is so low with plenty of one and two drops, we'll have a pretty nicely developed board to pick up all those extra counters. And then once we grow our other creatures, the brawler will grow even more, as it will pick up an extra counter for each one of our other creatures, essentially. And then it's a huge trampler that can help us close out the game. Then we also have four copies of the Dusk Legion Duelist, which is also quite nice alongside all these extra counters, especially the ones from Virtue, as it will draw us a card whenever it picks up its first plus one plus one counter each turn on a Vigilant creature, so it can also attack and potentially survive an opposing Wandering Emperor trying to exile it. And then we've got four copies of the Escort, which can also be sacrificed to give a creature with a plus one counter lifelink and indestructible until end of turn, so it can maybe protect one of our key creatures from a destroy or damage based effect, and then we can also maybe use it to just gain a bit of life in a racing situation, especially against decks like Monorad Aggro, can be quite useful. And then Catilda, of course, are very important to give us a mana boost early on, but then in the late game the 6 mana ability is also incredibly helpful, since we'll have lots of random creatures in play that can now tap for mana, and then we can start growing the team, draw more cards with the Duelist, and especially alongside our Virtue of Loyalty, there is a potential setup where we have enough creatures or mana in play, where we can tap our creatures in our turn using Catilda's ability to get more counters, and then after untapping everyone, we get to activate Catilda again during the opponent's turn, and potentially double dip on the duelist to draw extra cards, which is also pretty nice. And then Augur of Autumn, we already mentioned, another way to generate card advantage. So in those grindier matchups where the opponent has lots of removal, once we get an Augur going, especially alongside our 5-man enchantment, we can still re-establish a board pretty quickly. And then I also made room for two copies of the Wandering Emperor as just an individually powerful card. Gives us a Planeswalker, so if our opponent does have a Sweeper, we maybe still have something that can generate creatures afterwards, and then can also deal with larger creatures using the minus 2, maybe gain some life back. The plus 1 counters can draw more cards with a Duelist, or maybe help grow with a botanical brawler, so it's definitely still a very useful card to have, even just as a two-off. And then the mana base is pretty simple, four copies of Brushland, four copies of Thicket, no other dual lands since we want our lands to be untapped early on, which is pretty important, and we've got a relatively low land count in general, and then a six of each basic, and then the channel lands can offer a tiny bit more interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Escort into Brawler, and then Bond Warden would grow Brawler an additional time. Now we can go for Initiate into Brawler, which is the ideal start, as we could potentially train, getting more counters in the process. Opponent on kind of a Abzan mid-range deck, perhaps. They could have their own Virtue of Loyalty to ambush Initiates, I don't think we're attacking. I do kind of want to play the Brawler, although we could also play Escort first to protect it. And then could also play the Bond Warden. It's not very mana efficient as a problem, so I think I still just play Brawler. 
and then pass a turn. Opponent has March for initiates. Fair enough. So they probably have a different answer for Brawler now. A March of Wretched Sorrow. Fair enough. Opponent still at 21. So we need to make a bit of progress. Let's go with Escort. And then we can make a 2 2 at instant speed. Finding some of our card advantage engines would be nice, whether it's our two mana vampire or augur of autumn to play creatures at the top. For now, we can play a land and attack, and if our opponent does have a knight to ambush, we can grow the escort with the wandering emperor if they have their own wandering emperor. We could also grow escorts past the samurai. And then now, probably go for Bond Warden and another Virtue of Loyalty. And Bond Warden can put counter on itself. And then hope to pick up a fifth land next turn for Virtue. Opponent just activating Mirex. It is possible that a Sweeper is incoming here. Sunfall, of course, comes to mind. Which would have been a reason to hang on to Wandering Emperor to make a token end of turn instead. Yeah. Well, that's gonna happen. Can sack Escort to at least reduce the size of their token. And then still make a 2 2 end of turn. Alright, can get the Virtue going. And then we can attack, thanks to the Wandering Emperor. Opponent with another march. Okay. Okay, there's our duelist, that's nice. So I'll play it, immediately pick up a counter, draw a card. And there's Augur of Autumn, so we've got our two card draw engines. Hopefully our opponent runs out of removal soon. They still have two creature lands they can activate, and the incubator. It can be a White Suns for five. Another sweeper. Yeah, those uh, are threatening some poison damage here, but we can get on the board pretty quickly thanks to Augur initiates. And then we'll see what's next to land. So they don't have the best attacks outside of Rustless Cottage, and that's only going to be for one turn. Opponent does have double Mirax to kind of complement their five Might tokens to try and poison us. Can also activate the Initiate next turn to destroy an artifact or enchantment. We've got another Augur on top, so there's no way I can enable Coven this turn even by playing Wandering Emperor and making a token. We still only have 2 and 3 power, so at that point probably go for Virtue of Loyalty number 2. And then Augur of Autumn can attack since we'll get to untap it anyway. And I guess Initiate also could have attacked since we would have trained it. So now the Cottage does not have a great attack anymore. Edicts. I guess we'll keep Augur of Autumn still. Third Mirex. Okay. And no attack. I'll land on top. And then... Can play another Augur and still flash in Wandering Emperor. If our opponent double blocks Augur, then Wandering Emperor is pretty effective. So I think I do attack. Want to get this game over with before they make too many Might tokens. And then I'll hang on to the Wandering Emperor in case there's another Sweeper. Even though we miss out on the plus one counters this way.
by waiting on the samurai we also enable coven so we can play creatures of the top and the arrow points on empty and they're gonna go for it and they're not gonna be happy to see an additional blocker have to decide if I prioritize damage over poison yeah I think we can take out the 3-3 here take two more poison up to five And then Botanical Brawler's excellent, that's gonna threaten lethal next turn for sure. Another Emperor incoming. So going for another Samurai seems fine. Or we can just build up loyalty, but since we have another Wandering Emperor coming up, I'm not too concerned about a Sweeper next turn. Keep watch for and then these two can attack. Can our opponent double block with Cottages? I guess they can. But... Still not a disaster, but maybe that's a reason not to send my creatures here. Seems more likely for them to keep making poison creatures, but now a double block probably makes more sense. Still has them taking a bit of damage off those pain lanes. Okay, opponent's got double cottage, double block seven eights, and that's fine. So there are twelve. Get to make a huge botanical brawler here, and if they didn't top deck another sweeper, we should be in the clear. Path of peril. Well, that's a sweeper. So, not what we were hoping to see. But we're back on the board. Virtue is excellent, so just gonna attack, make another samurai. Bone can trade for cottage if they want. And an Iganjo. Okay, not a bad top deck. So, both of my Samurai taken out. And now triple Virtue of Loyalty, so any token turns into a huge threat. Opponents at 10, so they are facing lethal. And our opponent explodes, so well, we battled through multiple sweepers here, but still came out on top. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Definitely need to find a second land for this to work. Do I still keep it? It's pretty risky. I do have a human I can play on one, turn to Catilda, another human potentially. And then we've got the mana to even play Virtue of Loyalty on the following turn. So while risky, I think this is probably still better than mulliganing to six. On the draw we've got a chance of hitting a land in two draw steps. There we go. I'll start with the initiates. Can also be useful at blowing up enchantments later if our opponent's on some uh, five color deck with leyline binding. Looks like the Invasion of Alara build. So they will be able to take out Catilda here with a Virtue of Persistence most likely. But we've got a backup. Opponent discarding Herd Migration to get Mountain perhaps. Yeah, for opponent's got it in hand. So against Invasion of Alara, there's not much we can do to slow them down. And it's gonna be a Leyline Binding exiling Catilda. A Bond Warden. So we could play the Bond Warden, counter on Escort, attack, train initiates, but then I don't have the mana to destroy an enchantment yet. So probably best to just play Catilda. And then Bond Warden is a human, unlike the Knight. So that's an option 
to get one more mana for next turn. Oh, they'll be able to play the five mana enchantment if they don't interact. So maybe it's still best to make the knight. I can do that in their turn. So yeah, opponent's got four mana already. This is a virtue of persistence. So still gonna have to wait to deploy our virtue of loyalty. At least we got to make use of all three Cotildas. Stalwarts next. Wouldn't be able to play that since we don't have any green creatures. So just gonna be Cotilda plus another Bond Warden after attacking, so we get to train the initiates. Yeah, I could play Bond Warden now. Probably should have waited to play Cotilda in case her opponent has another binding. So they exile something else. But now we do still have initiates to try and go after the enchantments. Can we dodge Invasion of Alara? Alright, at least for one turn. And then now Frex and Flesh Gorger. Okay, another Virtue of Loyalty, so play Stalwart's Bontward Encounter on the Knights, so that can attack alongside Initiates and Train. And then next turn we can try and get our Catilda back for 3 mana, but it might be too late. Six mana means Cemetery Desecrator could be cast as well. Or just another Virtue. Okay, Knight down. So all in all, could have been worse for us. Take three. And a land. So we have quite a few options. Four mana available. Could activate the Initiates. Get back Cotilda. And then have access to one, two, three, four mana with the stalwart. Still play Augur of Autumn. Yeah, it's pretty decent. See, so yeah, I think I have to play the land first for that to work. Could also destroy Flesh Gorger, but I think we need the mana from Catilda more. Now I guess we could also attack first, hit four, four damage, and then still have one, two, three mana. So yeah, I guess we can attack first. And then use initiates. And then... I guess never mind, I don't have double green, so I can't quite play Augur of Autumn, but we will be able to make another knight. Unless it works. Opponent can now play Virtue of Persistence or a Cemetery Desecrator, even better. So that's gonna get rid of Catilda for the fourth time. But now with a land I can still play Virtue of Loyalty at least. With double Virtue of Persistence we also don't want to trade our creatures necessarily. And initiate the draw. So I'll start with Augur. I'll land on top. And Duelist on top. Play that. And then double Duelist with Virtue of Loyalty is pretty sweet. So we can pass it back. Opponent can play Virtue of Persistence. At least we were spared a Invasion of Alara so far. Take three. And another duelist on top, but uh, Virtue of Loyalty has to be the play. Grow the team, get some plus one counters going, draw a card with duelist. Now if only we also had a Catilda, I guess next turn we will. 
and then we can also use all this mana in the opponent's turn after untapping our creatures. Opponent gets in there. Now, of course, we can destroy the Virtue of Persistence, although our opponent will have two of them. So, for now, probably still take three down to five. Opponent plays Virtue. And now Botanical Brawler is going to be awesome with all these creatures getting counters. So, play the land. Escort on top. That can gain us some life back if needed. But yeah, let's just uh, try and empty our hand as much as possible, unless we want to get Katilda back first. Which also makes sense to me. So use the Initiates. Destroy the Binding. Then play Escort, play Brawler. Another Virtue Incoming. And Duelist is more card draw. And Initiate. Okay, and now watch the triggers as Botanical Brawler grows. Oh yes, and draw two cards. This is quite satisfying. Opponent gets back Katilda, but they only get to keep one of them. Now they can use the ability to grow their creatures as well. And then how much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So not quite enough to activate Katilda in the opponent's turn, which would be pretty sweet too with Brawler. But we can use the initiates to maybe destroy an enchantment or artifact and still make a knight. Opponent's gonna try and take out the duelist. Okay, that happens. Don't think we can stop that. I guess I can use the initiate now to remove a counter so we don't waste it. Although I might have to set up some blocks as well. Don't think that one counter is gonna matter too much. And Ascord doesn't help against a minus three, minus three effect. It's another virtue. But now with double initiates, it's not going to be a concern. So, yeah, opponent's going to concede already, unfortunately. Could have played another virtue next turn, and then this brawler just goes insane. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and is good enough. Got a 1-drop, turn to Katilda, play another 1-drop. Can try and save Duelists to go with Bond Warden. So turn 1 Initiate, turn 2 Katilda plus Escort is an option. Or we could go Escort, turn 2 Katilda, Bond Warden put a counter on it to keep Katilda safe. Against what looks like Mono Red Aggro. Turn 1 Swiss Spear, so the Brush Line's gonna hurt. So Planes to the rescue. Yeah, interesting sequencing here. I think we go for initiates. It can maybe block Swift Spear if our opponent just plays a haste creature. If they don't leave any mana untapped. It's going to be Felden next, so yeah, we can block Swift Spear now. And then stick to the plan of Katilda plus... Let's go with Escort. And then next turn, Duelist plus Bond Warden means I can... Use Escort to protect the Duelist. Just gotta hope our opponent taps out and doesn't mess too much with our plan. Because it could still take out Duelist in response to me getting a counter and then I cannot make it indestructible. So that would be a setback. And then the lifelink we'll eventually get from Escort could also matter quite a bit against Mono Red Aggro. It's gonna be a charming scoundrel. Going for a wicked roll on Swiss Spear and an all-out attack. Right, so we'll take five. No werewolves on the opponent side of the battlefield to block with Katilda. And then stick to the plane. Duelist plus Bond Warden. And then could save myself a bit of damage here. 
by tapping a creature. Don't think Catilda wants to get too involved. Another Catilda, so we can attack with the Escort and then still tap it. Although I could potentially chump with it and then also sacrifice it before damage. So maybe keeping the Escort as a blocker is still slightly better. Even though Initiate is by default a better blocker for Scoundrel. Okay, and then now we've got a lot of mana for next turn to potentially activate Catilda. So this attack could go Escort on Swiss Spear, Duelist on Felden, for instance. But then I kind of want the opponent to make the first move, so I won't want to sack Escort and then have them Lightning Strike my Duelist in response. So maybe I just put Duelist in front of Felden here, and then see what they do. And then next turn with a land I'll have four, five, six mana, so we can still activate Catilda, even without Escort. That looks okay. Monstrous Rage doesn't matter, and now they don't have the mana to finish off my Duelist. So that's good. They did not see that coming, apparently. We're still at 10. Opponent gets to dig. Finding a backup Felden for next turn or land. And double Phoenix check. Okay, so they do have a bunch of flyers here, which are still scary. If I activate Catilda, and then I do get to draw two cards, which is sweet, but doesn't help against those flyers. But I think that's still the plan here. Attack with the Duelists, activate Catilda, can't really do anything else. I suppose we could use Initiate to destroy the Wicked Roll, but that seems pretty medium. Augur of Autumn will help. And then now I have to consider blocking the Swiss Spear since I can't keep taking damage from it. Finding another Escort would be great. So with this attack, I'm just going to block and block. Hope they don't have two instants for prowess. Another monstrous rage, at least they only get to keep one roll token. So we still trade. We're at six. And a hearth elemental drawing two. Okay, first time seeing that in action. So if I were to attack with everyone, seven, eight, nine with a training, not quite lethal. So we'll probably start with Augur, unless we want to activate Catilda once again. Can just tap Bond Warden, and then yeah, we would get to it for a healthy amount and train initiates. So maybe that's still better than going for Augur, even though Augur can find Escort to gain life. It's not super likely. So activating Catilda might be better. So this taps for mana. Activates. Find a Bond Warden, which I'm not going to play. We'll train the Initiate instead. So we get to hit for 8. Next turn certainly present lethal. Just got to hope to dodge a pair of burn spells here, pretty much. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So beat Monoret in another very close game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand feels a bit too fair. No mana acceleration. It's going to be a while before we draw cards with a Duelist. And we also have to take a bit of damage of Double Brush Lane, so against Monored that's going to hurt. So, yeah, maybe in a different world this would be keepable, but I don't think it is. Alright, this is definitely better. So, turn 1 can go for Initiate, turn 2 maybe go for Catilda, and then turn after play Duelist plus Bond Warden draw card. So maybe I can afford to get rid of a Brush Land. So we don't take damage off of it. And Catilda can generate all the mana we need with all these humans. Up 
opponent on Esper. Probably has their own virtue of loyalty here. So we can play Catilda. Still hesitant to play Bond Warden afterwards since we want to save it to draw cards. That opponent's going to make disappear, so now we get to attack at least. And then next turn still Duelist plus Bond Warden. Virtue of Persistence to kill Initiate. Okay, opponent's got a lot of interaction. But at least we get to draw a card. Hope to draw another card next turn, but I'm not counting on it. Okay, can start with another Bond Warden, can pay for Make Disappear. That works. And a Wandering Emperor is nice too. So it can hit for four. Play Initiate. Now we've got a lot of hopes riding on Duelist here. Hoping to find Virtue of Loyalty would be great. Luckily, Duelist survived another Virtue of Persistence. And then now Emperor can also draw cards with Duelist. And I think we just main phase that right now. Alright, perfect. There's our Virtue of Loyalty. I'll play my land out. Maybe next turn make Samurai play Virtue of Loyalty. Never mind. Edict gets rid of our Planeswalker. Still lacking the enchantment half. Hit for five and draw a card, and then now the Bond Wardens turn into actual threats. Bond Warden was also protecting our duelist all along from Shielder's Edict. But we'll see for opponents packing a couple sweepers. Invasion instead, making two tokens, and Augur. Okay, so we have options. We won't necessarily be able to play around Sunfall all that well since it exiles, but Escort can at least protect from other removal spells by making some creatures indestructible. And then I can maybe hang on to Augur as something to play after a sweeper to get back on the board. So for now I think just attack with Duelist, play another one, and at least those will replace themselves with an extra card. Okay. Points on the back foot. Can they find a way out? Their own Wandering Emperor, not too effective against Vigilance. And avoid rent. Yeah, cannot be countered, but Escort will still work. And our opponent is in trouble now. So play another Escort, can attack all out. Opponent can survive, fall to two life. We'll get to draw two more. And then in the event of a Sunfall, we still have Augur left over to try and rebuild. Brawler's also pretty awesome alongside our Virtue of Loyalty, as it would immediately pick up a ton of extra plus one counters, and our opponent explodes onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one Stalwart sets up turn two Duelist plus Bondward and draw a card. And then we have our Augur of Autumn as another card draw engine. Turn one Planes, Catilda's nice too, but for now I think we stick to the plan. Duelist plus Bond Warden. Another Bond Warden means another card. And an ambitious farmhand put in black white, so we do have to fear board wipes in our future. So that's gonna make it a little bit tricky. But let's just replace our Bond Warden with an extra card. And then reevaluate. Now we can flash in the token end of turn. Could also play Catilda and then still make a token end of turn, which is maybe even better. And then kind of commit to 
a powerful uh, virtue of loyalty next turn. But something like Sunfall is going to be quite backbreaking. It's going to be Ossification for now. I imagine Exiling Duelist. So we'll still have the uh, Virtue of Loyalty plan, but now without the additional card draw. Yeah, let's just get the enchantment down while we can. And then could still play another Bond Warden as well. Maybe start there. Counter on the knight or on Katilda. Can go for Katilda so that can attack alongside the knight. Since I don't think we would have the mana to then activate Katilda afterwards despite having a few humans. Since we will get to untap the team here. Opponent jumping. Okay, play Virtue. So we have all the threats we need in play. And with Augur we can potentially re-establish a board. Especially with Bond Warden giving us another creature for Coven. Opponent with a tapped storefront. And a companion. So they can chum block once again and then next turn set up their sweeper. So I don't think we want to do anything besides attack. And then I can still activate Katilda in the opponent's turn technically. But there's probably going to be a sweeper. Which is a shame. Opponent falls to seven. So yeah, we have six mana plus Katilda activation. Opponent's got attack plan, so no sunfall at least. So maybe we do eventually get there. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, yeah. Activate Katilda, and that's more than enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one, go for escort. Saving Bond Warden in case we find our vampire. Or maybe Botanical Brawler, so we can grow it right away. And this is still a human for Katilda. Turn on Swiss Spear. So go for Katilda and then Bond Warden put counter on Katilda after attacking for one. So we can save Katilda from a burn spell using the Escort. I think that makes sense. Could also put counter on Bond Warden itself so when it dies we get to move it. Could have also put counter on Escort if we plan to immediately sacrifice it so we can then move the counter elsewhere with the Bond Warden's ability. So there's some interesting things you can pull off between the two. Another Swiss Spear. And an Ancestral Anger. So, don't really want to block here. Just take five. And then we have access to essentially six mana, so we can already play our Virtue of Loyalty if we'd like. Could also build up our board a bit more first, go for Augur, make a token, and then play Virtue of Loyalty, which I don't mind. So let's start with Augur, and then I have to decide if I want to play land first or not. Don't think the damage is going to matter too much. So let's tap Katilda, play Augur. And there's another Katilda on top. Alright, a little bit awkward. Can still hit for one. And then plan to make a knight token. And then next turn get our Virtue of Loyalty online. Kumano trigger Swiss Spear. And I'll take four. Might be a bit more than four damage if they have another instant. And Lightning Strike goes upstairs. Okay, make our knights. Take six down to four, but we still have that escort to gain life if needed. 
So let's see, if I play Virtue tapping four creatures, I'll have three mana left. And then we can activate Katilda again in the opponent's turn, so that actually works. So let me make sure to attack with Escort first. Hit for three. Then tap all my humans for mana. Play Virtue. Untap our team. And then we can block, activate Katilda, and then still sacrifice Escort for life gain. So just gotta hope they don't have four damage worth of burn spells. Rent's resolve is fine. Finds a play with fire, so if they have a second, we're dead. Phoenix chick. Okay. So as long as they actually attack with uh, Swiss spears, we're happy. But yeah, opponent doesn't have a reason to. They can just deal two and then two more with the play with fire. Yeah, that's a shame. Since we were going off here with Katilda and Virtue. And just never got a chance to gain the life with Escort. And that's gonna kill me. Yeah, can show that we can still activate Katilda. So we're essentially getting two plus one counters per turn. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand would have been pretty sweet with a green source. Going turn one initiate, turn two brawler, or stalwart into brawler plus initiate. As is, we're looking at initiate into duelist. No way to put counters on duelist. Yeah, that's a shame. Got a mulligan. This is not quite as exciting, but probably still have to keep. And then I'll keep my lands to cast Augur and Emperor. And then between Initiate and Escort, maybe keep the Escort. Escort is not quite as exciting if we draw Botanical Brawler on turn 2. But it can maybe protect Augur after we put a plus 1 counter on it with Emperor. And we actually drew turn 2 Brawler, so Initiate would have worked out nicely. Okay, can play Augur. And then next turn, start drawing extra cards, hopefully. I'll land on top. Escort can also protect Brawler from damage based removal or destroy effects. Opponents ramping with Topiary Stomper, so kind of your classic 5 color domain ramp deck. And yeah, Sunfall is definitely an option for them next turn. Which is gonna hurt. At least we get a free land of the top. Virtue coming up. So can attack all out. And then... We could save Emperor to make a token post Sunfall. Or we can go for a plus one counter now. And then grow Brawler in the process as well. Yeah, let's do that. Try and maximize our damage output. If our opponent's got a Sunfall, we're gonna be in trouble anyways. If our opponent has an invasion of Zendikar, then I could still jump with the Escort to prevent him from transforming it. Although they might go after our Planeswalker anyway. So no Sunfall. Ossification instead. So probably goes for our Planeswalker, yep. So Virtue of Loyalty is still looking good. Opponent could still have Leyline Binding, but then I would have expected them to use it on Augur of Autumn first, although we are currently not on uh, Coven, since we don't have a two-powered creature, for instance. So we could actually make a Knight and then play Bond Warden, but our opponent could still have a Sunfall in hand, since they didn't get a chance to cast Sunfall last turn, and that's probably why they went for the Planeswalker as well. So I don't think we need to put more creatures in play for them, and then we'll just have a Virtue of Loyalty to grow Bond Warden next turn. That's going to be the only creature in play. Still pretty sad. Whereas we could potentially threaten a lethal by putting a plus one counter on a creature here. So yeah, I guess if our opponent has nothing, 
with them being at 9. This could work out. Although now we might see a Leyline Binding instead. So we can play Stalwart in case there's another land on top. Initiate, I won't have the mana to activate. So yeah, we are attacking for lethal. I imagine we'll see Leyline Binding. And then next turn Sunfall. But at this point I think I'm just committing to Initiate, although Initiate would be good with Virtue of Loyalty, since that can destroy their enchantments, so maybe I don't play it here. Yep. Goes for Augur. So they're not trying to minimize the damage, which is interesting. So maybe they don't have a Sunfall after all. Opponent Cycling Garden, okay. Herd Migration to Gate 3, still not going to be enough unless they can cast another Leyline Binding. And they actually didn't have it, and their opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn 1 Stalwarts, turn 2, got a few options. Maybe Catilda plus Initiate against red aggro. Is their opponent going to take out Stalwart? Nope, just a Phoenix chick. Okay, so against red aggro the plan is to hopefully grow Brawler so it can survive one of their burn spells. And one way to do that is maybe by playing Katilda plus Initiate. And then next turn we can play Brawler, play Bond Warden, put counter on let's say Katilda. And then train the initiate as well, so that's multiple ways of growing Brawler up to a 4-4. So we're off to a reasonable start. Swiss Pier. And an attack, I'll take it. And it looks like Katilda down. We can still enact our game plan. Now Duelist is tempting to. Could go Duelist and then Bond Warden to draw a card. But I think we should stick to the plan of making Brawler a 4-4, which means play Brawler, Bond Warden on Stalwart, attack, train. Yeah, it hurts to give up the card with Duelist, but we're in a much better position now on the board. Opponent attacks all out with Felden, so could be a monstrous rage here, or another play with fire. I'll take it for now. At some point we can jump with a Bond Warden. Looks like a play with fire on Stalwarts. Emperor, we're now one mana short of casting, which is a shame, but we can still attack with Brawler Initiate, train, grow Brawler some more in the process. Oh, did not mean to attack with a Bond Warden here. Gotta send a message, I guess. Opponent gets in with Foundry, attacks all out. And has a play with fire. So there's seven damage coming across. But they are leaving themselves dead to Brawler plus Initiate, so they have to kind of hit the brakes a little bit. Still no mana for Emperor. But yeah, if I attack with both, still play Initiate afterwards, we should be okay. Yeah, Initiate plus Brawler just keeps growing over time. Might want to chum the non-trampler. Could also pass with the Initiate's ability to destroy Mishra's Foundry available. But now I'm happy enough chumping with Bond Warden. So yeah, hopefully opponent doesn't have a flurry of burn spells in hand to finish us off. A land and Godric, but no celebration. Otherwise, we would have been toast. So Bond Warden happy enough to get in the way. 
and then we'll have them on the way back. Yeah, close one here against Monorets, but uh, good to see the power of Brawler alongside Initiate onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising start. Stalwart sets up Duelist plus Bontward and draw card. Gives us more mana to get towards our 5 mana Virtue of Loyalty. And then Virtue plus Duelist can draw an extra card each turn. Put on blue-white soldiers. Okay, so there's certainly some annoying cards in this matchup. Thalia can make our Virtue more expensive. Could play Catilda and then still play Bond Warden just as kind of a mana creature with Catilda. Catilda's protection from werewolves can also be relevant against Brutal Cathar. Or we can go Duelist plus Bond Warden. Still add a human to the board, so next turn I can play Catilda and still make a knight. I think that's still reasonable. And a land is good too. So our opponent's gonna play some reinforcements here, most likely. And uh, yeah, we've got four mana. Once we play Catilda, we unlock a little bit more mana. So Duelist is probably not interested in trading for Officer and a token, unless we want to reduce the opponent's board in case, let's say, Harbin shows up. And that's one way the soldier's deck can beat us, is if they fly over our huge creatures on the ground. So maybe trading Duelist isn't such a bad idea, especially when we have another one. So I'll send a 3-3. Putin's gonna take it anyway. And then we can play Catilda. And then still make a knight without taking any damage. Okay, it's going to be a wedding announcement instead, so maybe not your typical blue-white soldiers. Alright, so we get to go off with our Virtue of Loyalty here. So play the enchantments. And then I'm a little bit short of also playing the second duelist, but we can play another initiate. And that's enough for a concession, yeah. Opponent's pretty far behind, so we get to draw two cards per turn while growing the team, and they're just too far behind to make up for it. Okay, so got to see our green-white plus one counter coven deck in action. And yeah, the deck's capable of some pretty nice starts with the Stalwart, with Catilda making a lot of mana, and then especially Brawler alongside a Virtue of Persistence can go pretty crazy. And then we still have some other card draw engines with our Vampire, with the Augur of Autumn. So the deck has game even in the more mid-rangey and controlling matchups, but of course a sweeper like Sunfall especially is going to be quite back-breaking. At least Escort can protect from destroy effects, but exile effects are usually too much for us to handle. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.